So we know it is spring despite the snowfall last night and this morning. <laughs> that was to put a warm white blanket over all of those things that had courage to pop out of the ground. I know. <laughs> I spent the day yesterday in shirt sleeves, just cleaning, oh. and, you know, just enjoying everything and seeing things pop. Yeah, this is Vermont, what can I tell you? Right, right. It feels a little schizophrenic, actually, but it's good to remember who's in charge and it's not us. Hi, <laughs> Marty. Hi, Tim. How much snow do you have up on your hill? Uh, about six inches, we think. It was very heavy, so it settled down very quickly. And we lost our power for a couple hours, yeah. but we at least too. it wasn't worse than that. I think we just lost ours intermittently this morning, but other places like up on Big Hollow Road, they were like you, they were out for a couple hours. And Lincoln, I understand, was out most of the day. So we were lucky. Yeah. Most of the day when? I wasn't out. Oh, somebody here is in Lincoln? I don't, that's what the... We have Castellas come and, and gets our garbage and recycling. And they, he told me that Lincoln was out all day, maybe just somewhere in Lincoln then. Well, I'm under Mount Abe. So my uh, stove said 1230 is when my power went out. Oh, okay. Okay. So you but had it. I had it all day. Day. And has it gone back? It's, has it gone back on now for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. It must be because we're all on this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to call Tim for the link. I've been doing my homework and I printed everything out and couldn't find the darn thing. So thank you, Tim. Thank you, Fran. You got a job in a restaurant. <laughs> okay. So it's Nine seven o'clock. So we're going to get started. I don't know. And, I really think um, my gun in. If people can mute themselves, um, except if when you're speaking during a breakout group, that would be great. And I'm Bethany Barry from Cornwall, um, one of the founders, co-founders of Pollison, uh, <laughs> Pollinator Pathway of Addison County. And I will, my speech will improve. Um, we are so excited to have you here at the culmination of our speaker series. And if you'd like to post your name and, and town in the chat, your friends and neighbors will know that you're here. Um, and we will begin with the land acknowledgement read by Jan McCleary, Starksboro co-chair for PPAC. The towns of Addison County sit on land that belongs to the Western Abenaki the traditional caretakers of these Vermont lands and waters, which they call Indokina or homeland. The land has served as a site of meeting and exchange among indigenous peoples since time immemorial. We remember their connection to this region and the hardships they continue to endure. We give thanks for the opportunity to share in the bounty of this place and to protect it. We are all one in the sacred web of life that connects people, animals, plants, air, water, and earth. Thank you. So um, a little background. Um, PPAC has grown from an unformed idea in September, starting with a small group of us at an informal gathering at my house to learning about the pollinator pathway of the Northeast, which was started by Donna Merrill in Connecticut five years ago. It has grown exponentially, or bloomed, or pollinated, as we could say. It's now in 10 states and over 300 towns, including our 15 towns in Addison County. We have a steering committee and have been meeting weekly since January to grow and get our winter speaker series so we can learn much more about the fragile pollinators and how we can help them. We need pollinators. 75% of our food depends upon them and they are endangered because of us. 
from pesticide use, loss of habitat and climate change. They need our help. So let's do our bit for them and for us as we learn, have fun and strengthen our Vermont community. Our speakers have been, well, before I say that, I just want to thank Brett, whose idea all of these were. Fran and I left to our own devices would not have come up with all of these projects and plans for this. So Brett really said we need to do a speaker series. And so we, Fran and I followed direction and said, okay. And Brett really found the speakers and created this for us. And we could not be here without him. So thank you so much, Brett. So our first speaker was Donna Merrill who explained the pollinator pathways origin and purpose. The second was Emily May who works for the Xerces Society and talked to us about insects and pollinators. The next was Mary Ellen LeMay who spoke about rewilding our lawns and large pieces of land for the health of pollinators, wildlife, birds, air and water. And our final speaker last week was Sephra Alexandra, who spoke about the importance of seed and seed banks, food independence and equity and opportunity. We have all learned a lot and we'll have a chance to share, brainstorm, ask questions and move forward today at our final event the Pollinator Pathway of Addison County Spring Forum. We are so happy you're all here and to see the faces of some of the names that we've been seeing time after time at each event. So it's really great. So um, Brett will introduce the program for tonight. Hello everyone. Uh, so we are very excited tonight for our, our spring forum, an event for building community around native plants and pollinators uh, for meeting new friends and, and uh, getting together and, and, and starting this movement off. Uh, we heard from so many of you that you wanted a platform for connecting with other people interested in biodiversity and rewilding. Uh, with ins this inspiration, we came up for this event, the spring forum. Uh, and the pollinator pathway really at its core is all about talking with your neighbor, networking with friends, meeting with new people and sharing in the buzz. Uh, at this event, you'll be able to do just that. Um, participants will be able to join breakout groups based on your town to connect with neighbors and others in your area. And uh, discussions will be facilitated by the PPAC representative for your town. Um, this is a really great opportunity to reflect on the amazing information shared by our guest speakers over the past few months, to share ideas, to learn from one another, ask questions, and to gather together those who are passionate about our budding movement and want to take action. Um, so uh, tonight, uh, we're, we're going to be breaking out into some different groups for the next uh, 50 or so minutes. Um, where we're going to have some guiding questions to kind of facilitate conversation uh, by each town. Um, and uh, we ask each town to choose a volunteer to take notes uh, and someone who can report back to the larger group at the end should be nominated. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to open up the breakout groups uh, so that everyone can can join those. Um, and they should be open now. So to join that, you're going to go to the breakout group rooms tab at the bottom of your screen and, and find that, uh, find the town that is most closely associated with you. Um, yeah. If I'm in Ripton, should I do Cornwall or not Cornwall? Should I do Middlebury or Winston? I don't really know. Did you say you're from Ripton? Yeah. There is a, a Ripton group. There is? Starksboro and Ripton. Oh, I see it. Okay. Thank you. Brett, is there a an East Middlebury group, or are we to become part of the Middlebury group? 
Uh, for for today, part of the Middlebury group. Uh, not many people from Middlebury today, so uh, you all be together. Okay, and how do how do we get with them? I will assign you to that. Okay, thanks so much. How, how do you put your name into the group? I see other people's names, but mine, I can't seem to get there. <laughs> Uh, I can put you in manually if you just give me uh, just a second. Uh, which which town are you from? Middlebury. Okay. You should have have an invitation now. Okay. Anyone else need help getting into a breakout group? Yeah, I'm totally alarm? lost. Okay. okay, one person at a time. We're going to start with Stan. The town of Warren, please. The town of Warren. See, don't see anybody listed. So you're one of the outside Addison County people, Stan. So you can actually choose any group to join. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Brad? Right. Yeah. Uh, Judith. Yes. My name doesn't appear on the list. Is it automatic? Um, uh, which which group are you going to? Crystal Lincoln. I also <coughs> my name is. Eva. Okay, there you go, Eva. Thank yes. you, Brett. Yes, Brett, I so, don't see any way to join a group. Nothing's showing on my screen. I'm on an me iPad. Me too. Okay, I'm going to be assigning everyone. Uh, manually i'm um, just going in order so i would if you could just be patient i will get to you eva okay. is next okay so um i'm up in um south burlington and i would love to join a group i don't okay. really um, know when it is but um... all right i'm just going to place you in a random group if that's all right it's okay that sounds good that's perfect for you eva <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, Deborah's next. I'm supposed to be in Moncton, and I don't see a list either. I mean, see names, but I don't see towns. Okay, Moncton, Moncton, Moncton. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Okay, Emily is next. Um, I live in Bristol, but I wanted to join the New Haven group because I have an okay. organization there. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, there you go. Okay. Jan? Uh, Starksboro, please. Okay. Uh, Leah? Uh, it's Lee, but I'm, I'm looking for East Middlebury. Do I just default to Middlebury? At just Middlebury. Okay. Let me see if I can get in there. Okay. Polly? New Haven. There you go. Susan. Thank you. Moncton. Okay, Anna. Waybridge. Okay. And Susan. Susan Humphrey. Susan, you're muted. Oh, she would be in Waybridge, actually. Waybridge. Waybridge. Waybridge, got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the, the next section of this. Um, what we're going to do is to have each town report, we have about two minutes to report on maybe two or three things that your town talked about. Um, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to start you off at two, two minutes. And when you see my finger go up, I'll say one minute, and then I'll say five seconds. Okay. That way we can, we have, I think, eight or nine groups, two minutes per group, we should be able to finish uh, pretty fast. So Let's do group one first. Um, 
Raise your hand if you are if you are the reporter for group one. What mute town is that? And if you're not speaking, please mute yourself to save us all distractions. Okay. It's me, Fran. Um, there were only three other people in the group, uh, one from Bridport, one from North Ferrisburg, and one from Addison, and everybody's relatively recent uh, transplants, um, as I am myself, two of them coming from California. And um, uh, I think Gabe and Sherry are going to be really good to have involved in our group because they were sort of way ahead of us out there in the land of very little water. They had already been converting their lawns, um, you know, thinking about permaculture and they're bringing that philosophy here, but just learning it now in a, in a new place in the East Coast. Um, the nice thing about all three of them um, very much interested in reducing their lawns that they have. Uh, 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 the one individual who is not involved in um, farming, Catherine, she really wants to try to change over uh, the mown, mowed grass. You know, she says, well, they just all come in and cut it and brush hog it. And it just seems to be the thing that people do here. Um, but she, her and her husband are kind of resisting that and want to change over 10 acres uh, into a wildflower garden. All three folks are uh, working hard to plant more trees on their properties um, and are putting that in, um, improving the uh, pasture and soils. And uh, both of um, Gabe and Catherine, or Gabe and Sherry, also very much interested in helping create um, uh, farming settings, permaculture farming settings where they can actually um, provide educational basis for other people, learn how to um, not just help pollinators, but then how do we help our food supply and how do we um, do that in the best possible way. Um, and uh, some of them are keeping bees, looking into keeping bees. Um, and I think, I think that's about it only because we talked about a lot of personal things and <laughs> went in depth about uh, a lot of our history. So a lot of rewilding going on. Fran? I'm muted, group two. <laughs> Can you name the town, please? Bethany, do you have the list? That's Addison and Bristol. And what a great, what a great group of people. Um, it was hard, uh, it's hard, hard act to follow after Andrea though. Um, we really found a common strand. Um, we we're, we're, we want to go in the direction of education, both ourselves and others based on the, you know, the three things that the goal of um, no pesticides, planting pollinators and, and repurposing lawns, but um, looking forward to getting resources that are easily accessible both for ourselves and to pass on. Um, also, we talked about best practices um, that sometimes what we think is best practices might not always be. And there's some basic ones that we can start learning about. And the big thing was connecting and networking. Um, the last 15 minutes, we talked about getting together in Lincoln and meeting and potential things we could do, um, seed swaps and, and all kinds of things. And um, it's so nice to know there's people in my little tiny community that are thinking and caring the same as I am. And this has put us all together. And I think that was the purpose, but it really worked very, very well. Thank you so much. So um, we would like to come up with a plan, um, something very concrete. And and we talked about possibly working on some projects with Bristol, um, but depending on the project, it makes sense or doesn't, it doesn't make sense to do that. That's where we're at. Great, thank you, very good. All right, number three. What, what town is that? Yeah, we don't know what towns these numbers are, Fran. Bethany has a list. Bethany, you're muted. You're muted. I carefully muted myself, sorry. That's Cornwall. So it's Kimberly. 
right? <clears throat> I've been carefully crossing off all the things that you already said, so I'm not going to duplicate, but we said everything you said. And um, for Cornwall specifically, um, making sure that our property is listed on the national pollinator pathways, which I haven't done yet. So go to pollinator dot or slash pathways dot org, and it's just you get a little dot, and it'll show that our different areas are starting to link together. Um, and then along with that, we said, well, wouldn't it be great if we had a map at a town hall that shows um, just Cornwall green dots, who's participating in what? And again, with the mapping, if each of us went to three or four of our neighbors and said, I'm doing it here's some information, maybe you'd like to do it too, to increase those dots because visuals. Um, we talked about what worked, what hasn't worked in terms of what we've learned and not learned. Um, how to do it cheaply was sort of an interesting, how are we gonna do this? Um, and, hmm. Oh, we talked a little bit about companion planting um, with both in terms of planting something to deter pests from your vegetables, but also making sure that you plant food for your pollinator babies. So making sure that dill is near something that a monarch would, um, once that the lar monarch larvae would eat the dill and would also then move to the flower. So we talked about that as well. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Make sure there's enough for everyone else. All right, I've, I've tried to put it in the chat like three times what the towns are. I can't do it. <laughs> Control V, it didn't work. No, so, it's in there. Okay. So the next one is Ferrisburg and North Ferrisburg. Oh, oh, okay, it is in there. Okay. Ferrisburg and North uh, this Ferrisburg. Is, this is Megan Sheridan. Um, I was in the Ferrisburg, North Ferrisburg group with Pauline and Ava, and Ava had it had to leave. Um, Pauline is still here, but her internet is a little spotty, so she can chime in. Um, but um, I was actually the only one from Ferrisburg in the group, and so it was a pretty small group of us, and we were um, uh, two of us besides Pauline. Um, <laughs> um, we're um, we're are, are relatively new to the group and still um, getting on to watch the the presentations, but. Um, enthusiastic. It's nice. I don't think we had quite as constructive a conversation as as the rest of you had related to future projects. We were more talking about um, self education and um, trying to glean as much as we possibly could from Pauline while we had her <laughs> and her knowledge um, of of plants and and farming. So um, I'm not sure. You know, I'm I, like I said, I'm from Ferrisburg and super excited about being engaged with this group. Um, and uh, love the, for me personally, thinking about larger tracts of land, um, you know, 10 acres or more and rewilding that or managing that in, um, in a way that, uh, yeah, that supports the pollinator habitat and um, throughout this corridor of, of Addison County. So love, would love to link up on projects like that. Um, working with farmland and larger plots, um, as well as our own individual plots. And I think the idea about having visuals at town halls about these um, is a great, great idea. Um, and I'll leave it at that, Pauline, if there's anything else you wanted to add in. I don't see Pauline's, I don't see her hand or anything. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. I'm going to look in the chat, see what the next group is. Okay, uh, and I'll also just put a plug for Pauline's, the Golden Russet Farm. They're opening this Saturday and they have native plants that she's working on putting, growing. So my little plug, now I'll let it move. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. So group five is Middlebury. Woohoo. Okay. There were five of us who met representing Middlebury and East Middlebury. Um, we talked a great deal about all of the new information we're taking in. So I, I saw in the chat, somebody mentioned self-education, how really important that is. And um, waiting on cleaning up and having proper signage in our yards so that we're um, helping neighbors to know 
why our yard may look a little bit messy. Uh, we talked about um, the complexity of all of this as well, how neonicotinoids finding clean seeds and clean plants, it's really, really important and um, not necessarily a given unless we know that the place really sort of um, promises. So it's, it's really, we talked about how important it is to actually say out loud to the clerks, to the managers of some of the local places we go, do you use neonicotinoids? Here's why I wouldn't buy that product. So continuing to educate, um, not, not in a, like a threatening way, but in a sort of friendly, civil way. Um, we talked about some of the things that were exciting to us moving forward. Everyone really agreed community engagement and how exciting it is to see neighbors and people near us getting on board with pollinator pathways and native plants. Um, we talked about the re for it, how important it is for people to know the reason behind no, mo, may. And as much as we talk about dandelions, um, it's really important to think about sort of the super nutritious uh, native species, wildflowers and native plants that will support our pollinators. Um, when we talked about actions we might take, we agreed signage is really important. And then friendly conversations with neighbors and people who may be walking down our street um, helping people to know what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, we talked as, as we got into ideas for our towns, um, opportunities for children to be involved with this, um, the possibility of some pop-up gardens, but also thinking that we, are, we need to really um, combine our efforts to work with others who are sort of already on board doing this. So rather than being loose cannons going this way and that, really coordinating our efforts. Um, I think, oh, and, and pos positivity, that it's, it's really important to be kind of positive and enthusiastic about what we're doing. And the fact how this is so important because we're taking action to in some small way combat climate change. And that feels really, really important. Thank you very much. Um, excellent. All right, number six is Moncton. Was Moncton linked with somebody? Yes, we were with um, Salisbury, two people from Salisbury. Okay, Salisbury, good. I think. <laughs> um, and a lot of what has been uh, talked about so far, we, we did move and talk about those different things. It's interesting that Pauline was brought up and that her garden, I don't know Pauline, but two people in my group did and said that her place was was wonderful and we were talking about how important it was to try to find native plants that weren't cultivars and how it can be difficult to do that. And it sounds like the golden rest of, of Pauline's place is going to provide opportunities to get true native plants, new, native pollinators. And we actually talked about the possibility of propagating some of our own from native that we already have, like Anne is talk, um, propagating pussy willows from pussy willows that she already has. And so we, we talked about sharing those ideas and sharing how to do that. Um, and we also are doing uh, pollinator gardens in community areas like our new um, community center. And we talked about the fact that the school has a garden and working with the people who already are at the school um, to, as, as you said earlier, so we're co contributing and working together rather than being loose cannons, as you mentioned. Um, and right at the very beginning, we, we just all the wonderful things that the presentations that have been provided to us so far and how much we've learned, how complex all of this information is, but at the same time, we can all take at least some small steps working towards the larger goals. And one of the things that was mentioned at the finding out the importance of trying to have pollinators early in the season and really late in the season. We think that we have, oh, I have all kinds of pollinating plants that provide for pollinators, but they may all be at the same time rather than extending that season. So that was another thing we talked about. Um, I think that's, I don't know if I have anything else to add. It's just, this is great though. We really appreciate the opportunity to get together and share with one another. 
And we Great. didn't really talk. We didn't really talk about this much during the meeting, but in Moncton, we are going to do our meetings at each other's houses right. so that we can come seeing our gardens. Yeah. What a great idea. And you know, one thing that uh, Bethany and I keep stressing to people is she and I are not experts. We're just gathering group this group together and we're all learning together. And so if people came to my garden, uh, they would not see, they would see the beginnings of what I'm trying to, what we're trying to accomplish here. So nobody should feel that you have to have a perfect garden before you can invite your neighbors. That's just a little plug. Okay, um, number seven is uh, New Haven. Hi, yeah. Um, there were five of us. Um, we found out one of the people is, um, or was it two? We're master gardeners, our master gardeners. So that's really exciting to make some connections with people who have all this gardening expertise. Um, we um, were really lucky because we actually had someone from Bristol in our group, but she uh, goes to the Congregational Church in New Haven and the New Haven Congregational Church, she wants to make a plot that has native pollinator friendly plants. And so we spent most of our time being quite excited about that as a project, like a nice thing for us to focus on. and trying to figure out like, can we get kids involved? And, um, you know, just like basically seeing how we could support this um, project, which is pretty much like downtown um, New Haven near the green. So um, yeah. Um, and so yes, um, Emily was talking about how it might be nice to have that be like a demo garden. And um, so, uh, yeah, I think the main thing is we're we're hoping to see how we can help the congregational church make a garden. Awesome. And I know the minister of that church is excited about that also. Happen to know her. Okay. Uh, Starksboro. We had six people from Starksboro and we were joined by Ash in Ripton. And um, we talked about learning and connecting with one another and also visiting one another's gardens as a way to learn to identify plants, native plants that we can then um, put in our own gardens. And one person lives on a big pond and is, has a project to um, take out the invasives in her garden. And we reminded one another that it's fine to start small and probably good to start small. One person has a big field that, um, uh, and is planning on learning how to put in uh, flowering plants that bloom at the beginning and middle of the summer rather than just at the end of the summer. We're very lucky that we have Marika, uh, in South Starksboro, who's been studying with Doug Tallamy for like 18 years. I might not have this quite right, Marika, so excuse me if I don't, but she's inviting us up at the beginning of June to see what she has in her gardens, her extensive gardens. And I have only been there once or twice, and I would just put a plug for Marika's gardens and that all of us here tonight will pro would probably learn a lot and enjoy going to see her gardens. Um, so, so we're going to go to one another's gardens and maybe even help one another out in our gardens. That's what I, I kind of hope for that. And talk to our neighbors. And Marika suggested we each try to bring somebody else or one or two other people to kind of spread the word. Um, when we come. And Jan suggested that we do a demo garden in the church that's right down in the, the, the front yard of the church that's in the middle of Starks Row, which seems like a, a, a great idea. Uh, let's see. Doug Tallamy's book, Bringing Nature Home, is at the Starksboro Library. I think it was contributed by Marika, and a couple of us have started reading it, and we're, it'll be passed on soon to other 
to you know back to the library to be passed on to other people. Such a wonderful book. Let's see. Uh, Ash is learn is interested in learning not only about the plants and that help the soil and that are form in uh, the plant communities, but how to harvest the plants. Let's see. Jan is interested in how to get the message out to the kids and take an educational approach. Let's see. I would like to try again to go to the hardware store in Bristol and talk to them about the neonicotinoids. <laughs> but, um, and I was thinking, well, maybe we could write an article or somebody could in the Addison Independent. This is the time when we're all buying, we're starting to think about buying plants and to list maybe places where we can go to find plants that don't have neonicotinoids in them as perhaps an incentive for these other places to um, stop carrying those plants. Uh, so I think that was about it. Um, we are going to start, I think, maybe I said that in early June, to get because, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to connect. You beat me. Thanks, Margie. This is great. We have one more uh, town, and then I want to just briefly talk about money, because that's something none of us have talked about yet, and then Bethany has something about a bill and then I'm going to wrap it up. So uh, we're almost done here. I thank you for your for hanging in here. I know it's getting a little late, uh, but let's do Waybridge. OK, I'm I'm on deck for that. We had five people. We spent uh, the first few minutes talking about what things are what people have uh, learned. And so now we've discovered a new value for a caterpillar. Uh, the distinction between introduced bees and which would be honeybees and native bees and a lot of enthusiasm about learning the value of messy gardens. You don't have to be a neat Nick for this. Generally learning about Vermont ecology. Uh, it was really, it's obvious that people are pleased to be in a group of people that care about these issues. We talked a lot about invasives only now, if we can make a team effort, it's more fun. It's not, doesn't seem like such a chore if we can work on these things together. People are looking forward to redesigning their plantings. Uh, people look at this as a positive project that you can get, uh, get in touch with each other and with where we live and work on a positive climate related issue. So uh, we talk quite a bit about trying to get our town properties involved in because there's a lot of town plots of land that belong to the town of Waybridge scattered all over the town so one project might be to to encourage them to uh, put native plants plantings in the various gardens that already exist and maybe establishing some new ones uh, we also talked briefly about whether or not we could bring the town road crew along on this um, and then when we talk, and also putting educational signage around town, especially any, any kind of plantings that we do put, make sure they're properly identified. But when we talk about working as a group on some project, I think the most likely thing that we'll start with is some sort of either in identification of invasives or possibly even eradication of them. But invasives were uh, probably where we put our energies first. That's Thank it, you. Right. Thank you very much. All right. I, I wanted to say something about, about money because that's something we haven't talked about at all. How do you fund these uh, projects? So um, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, poll Pollinator Pathway of Addison County is not really a, a nonprofit. We can't really accept money at this point and we can't really raise money at this point. But uh, I think as town groups, you can work with your your town uh, to ask for money, they probably have a budget for plantings. Um, you could work with your church, your library and so on, conservation commission, anybody that has a budget or a fund, you could apply for a grant. Um, so you just have to be creative. Um, 
So I just, just wanted to put that out there to be thinking about how are you gonna pay for some of these projects? Um, so Bethany has, has something about the uh, bill in the legislature she wants to let you know about. So um, I don't know if any of you saw the article in Vermont Digger, which was, uh, no, seven days um, last week about the neonicotinoid bill in Vermont, which um, is probably not going to pass um, because the farmers, it, it's really this tricky thing that the Monsanto seeds are coated with neonicotinoids and just sort of as a huge overview of killing anything, just in case, in case there's something there that needs to die like a pest. Um, and the neonics have a huge impact on our soil, our water, pollinators and it's really it's one of the reasons that the beekeepers which are honeybees have been dying at such high rates and um and so there was a bill in vermont which um is not going to pass because farmers came out in defense of having the, the monsanto seeds so i think that Legislation is a really important part of this, and we can act as a grassroots group and make our voices heard because neonicotinoids are really damaging to all of us. And um, so you can follow in the legislature, we can talk to our representatives, we can write letters to the editor. I mean, this would be a good time to do that. Um, and it's really educating ourselves about this. And just so you all know, Fran and I knew nothing about any of this seven months ago. You know, we have learned a lot quickly and sort of because we needed to. And we were sort of shown the way. Um, so that's an important piece. And it's also talking to nurseries and saying, you know, we want to buy plants that don't have neonicotinoids in the soil, as somebody mentioned. But again, if there are enough of us making our voices heard, you know, Martin's Hardware will listen, Agway will listen, um, Greenhaven will listen. Um, so that's something that we can do. And the other thing that I'll say briefly is in terms of um, invasive remo removal, I have some property in Cornwall that I have a lot of buckthorn on. And I have found somebody who will work only, he will not, he will not use a chainsaw. He is doing it by hand. So it's less fossil fuels, which is part of the reason for all of this is climate change. And um, I found him through the, the um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's part of Vermont state um, conservation processes. So there is that available. And really, if more people want to do that, there's a huge market for it because we really need a lot more of that. So I think that's all I will say about that. And Fran, do you want to? Yeah, I'm going to finish up. <laughs> um, just, just to let you know that um, we're going to be uh, giving their email addresses to your group leaders so they can get in touch with you if you haven't already done that. So if there's any reason you don't want that done, um, that, that would be the only thing we would do with your email address. Um, so since this is the last uh, webinar for, for now, uh, we're going to be shifting, the steering committee is going to be shifting the uh, activity to the towns. We'll still keep meeting once a month as we have, but we just wanted you to know that um, we won't be having the speaker series and more webinars. It's going to be up to your group leaders and your group to do what, take this in whatever direction you want, but we'll still be here if you need us. Um, so our role as a steering committee is to, to be a connection, uh, like a clearinghouse for information for town groups. Uh, we're gonna to continue to collect 
uh, resources, lists of plants, uh, native to Vermont, how to find native plants, uh, finding someone who maybe could help you design your garden and more. So we'll be doing that. We'll be continue to share those resources. So you can help us uh, if you find somebody or a nursery or a place that you think is great, let us know. We'll check it out and we'll send it out. Um, the Pollinator Pathway Northeast website is full of really good information. You also have a quarterly newsletter. So I really encourage people to go to that. And we have a page on there. Addison County has a page on there. If there's anyone here who, who would like to uh, help us um, fill out that, that our page a little bit more with some of these resources, we would love to have that help. Um, so, oh, right, for the group leaders, I've given you this before, but don't forget, there's a great page on the Pollinator Pathway website on how to form a Pollinator Pathway group in your own town. And, and just keep going back to that because they keep adding new ideas. So uh, we hope to have an outdoor gathering at some point this summer, maybe a potluck for anyone from any of the towns who would like to come. And there may be some more speakers in the fall. So please stay in touch with your own town group leader and help help these people because they're not going to do this for you it's going to be a group effort we're all busy people and uh, so this is as someone said this is about community and about getting people in town together so i think that's everything i wanted to say um except to thank everybody here i want to thank my partner bethany and we've already thanked brett but one more time brett was just amazing He's 19 years old. He's a second year student at Middlebury College. This whole idea came to us from him, including the speaker series and all the people that he invited and got us in touch with. So I, I just think, you know, it's been it's been amazing. We just thought, well, we'll just take it step by step at a time and look what happened in the few months that we've been working. So thanks, thanks to everybody. Thank you for all these great ideas. I've been taking notes. This will be recorded and uh, you know you can, you can use it as a resource. I know we kind of went kind of fast at the end there, but there were so many good ideas. So let's just keep the ideas coming and um, we'll be in touch. So thanks everybody. Yeah, and stay Thank connected. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. Bye. Thanks so much, Beth and Anne and Fran. Thank you all.